This will be exchanged on the Australian side by Her Excellency Ms. Harinder Sidhu, High Commissioner of Australia to India, and on the Indian side by Sri Rajiv Mehrishi, Home Secretary. Next, MOU for Promotion and Development of Cooperation in Civil Aviation Security to be exchanged on the Australian side by Her Excellency Ms. Harinder Sidhu, High Commissioner, and on the Indian side by Srimati Preeti Saran, Secretary, East Ministry of External Affairs. The third MOU is on cooperation in the field of environment, climate, and wildlife to be exchanged by the Australian High Commissioner and Secretary East Preeti Saran from the Ministry of External Affairs. The fourth MOU is on cooperation in sports to be exchanged by Ms. Kate Palmer, CEO of Sports Commission of Australia, and Dr. Ajay Gondane, High Commissioner of India to Australia. <laughs> the fifth MOU is on cooperation in the field of health and medicine to be exchanged by the High Commissioner of Australia to India Excellency Ms. Harinder Sidhu, and on the Indian side by Dr. Ajay Gondane, High Commissioner of India to Australia. <laughs> the sixth MOU will also be exchanged by the same dignitaries. This is implementation arrangement between ISRO and Geoscience Australia on cooperation in Earth observation and satellite navigation. May I now invite both the Prime Ministers to step forward to jointly inaugurate the Terry Deccan Nano Biotechnology Center in Gurugram by pressing the start button. the acting spokesperson of the Ministry of Excellent Affairs to continue the proceedings. Thank you. Uh, may I first request uh, uh, Prime Minister of India to make her statement. His Excellency, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, members of the media, Excellency, I am delighted to welcome you on your first ever visit to India. Just last month, we witnessed a thrilling conclusion to the border Gavaskar Trophy. In my speech at the Australian Parliament in 2014, I had spoken of legendary Bradman and Tendulkar. Today, Virat Kohli in India and Stephen Smith in Australia are shaping 
the young brigade of cricket. I hope your visit to India is as pro productive as it has been for Stephen Smith batting the other Australian captain. <laughs> Excellency, I vividly recall our meetings on the sidelines of G20. They have always reflected a strong sense of convergence and purpose. I particularly appreciate your active interest in advancing the substance of our engagement. The journey of our cooperation is firmly on course. Under your leadership, our relationship has touched new milestones. And your visit gives us an opportunity to shape new priorities in our strategic partnership. Excellency, the waters of the Indian Ocean remind us of our link histories. They are also a pointer to our connected destinies. The values and principles of democracy and rule of law are common to both our nations. Today, the vast scope of opportunities in our ties is defined by a strong desire for economic prosperity by 1.25 billion people of India and Australia's capacity in strengths. Friends, in our discussions today, Prime Minister and I reviewed the entire gamut of bilateral relations. We took a number of forward-looking decisions to further strengthen our partnership, including the decision to soon hold the next round of negotiations on our comprehensive economic cooperation agreement. In a lighter vein, I am of course glad that our decisions are not subject to the DRS review system. Friends, both India and Australia recognize the central value of education and innovation in the prosperity of our societies. It is no surprise, therefore, that cooperation in the field of education and research is one of the most important aspects of our engagement. Prime Minister and I have just inaugurated the Terry Dakin Research Center on Nano and Biotechnology, which is a classic example of the kind of cutting-edge science and technology cooperation that is happening between our two countries. The Australia-India Research Fund of nearly $100 million has focused on collaborative research projects in the areas such as nanotechnology, smart cities, infrastructure, agriculture, and disease control. Our joint development of bananas fortified with vitamin A has entered the phase of fields trials. Our scientists are also collaborating on developing more nutritious and 
hardy varieties of pulse seeds. These are just two examples of our outstanding science cooperation, firmly rooted in tangible outcomes that will improve the lives of millions, including our farmers. I also extend a warm welcome to the large delegation of vice chancellors and heads of vocational training institutions that is accompanying by Prime Minister. In number of institution to institution tie-ups have been concluding during this visit. Student exchanges are an important element of bilateral education cooperation. Australia is home to more than 60,000 Indian students. Increasing number of Australian students are coming to study in India. Responding to the aspirations of India's youth building, world-class institutions in India is one the objective of my government. Prime Minister and I discuss beach by beach Australian universities could connect and contribute to this goal. Friends, Prime Minister and I share a conviction that our economic growth and prosperity must be gentle on the environment. We are happy that our dialogue and cooperation in the other forms of energy, including renewable energy, is on the upswing. I would also like to thank Prime Minister for Australia's decision to join the Interstellar Solar Alliance. And with the passing of legislation in the Australian Parliament, with bipartisan support, Australia is now ready to export uranium to India. Friends, Prime Minister and I recognize that our future is deeply tied to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific. We therefore agree on the need for a secure and rule-based Indo-Pacific. We are also aware that in this globalized world, challenges like terrorism and cybersecurity extend beyond the boundaries of our region and therefore require global strategy and solution indeed. Prime Minister's understanding and insight into regional and global issues brings a new dimension to our cooperation on matters that concern us both. Our cooperation in the areas of defense and security has reached new heights. Our maritime exercise and exchanges have been productive. Our bilateral mechanisms on counterterrorism and transnational crimes are functioning well. I'm particularly pleased that we have been able to conclude an MOU on security cooperation during this visit. We also agree that strong regional institutions are necessary for peace, prosperity, and sense of balance in our region. We would therefore actively work to cooperate more closely with members of the East Asia Summit and the Indian Ocean Dream countries to pursue our common interests. Friends, a major pillar of strength in our partnership is the connect between our societies. Australia is also home to nearly half a million people of Indian origin. Their prosperity and vibrant culture enrich our partnership. A very successful festival of India called Confluence was held in many cities of Australia 
last year. I thank Prime Minister for all the help and support accorded to the festival by the Australian government. Excellency, India and Australia have made major strides in our bilateral relations in recent years. In months and years ahead, we only see promises and opportunities for our two nations. Our strong and vibrant strategic partnership is, of course, important for the security and well-being of our societies. But it is also a major factor for peace, stability, and security in our region. With these words, Excellency, let me welcome you once again to India and wish you a fruitful and productive stay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your welcome, your hospitality is as warm as it is magnificent. We're very honored to be here uh, at your invitation. As you said, our two nations have so much in common. Cricket, of course, but we have a commitment to democracy and the rule of law. And you lead, sir, the largest democracy in the world. Indian historians have often described that India was an improbable democracy, but it is the world's largest. The success you have achieved is the wonder of the world. The largest democracy in the world, shortly to be the largest nation in the world, built out of so much diversity, and you've achieved this remarkable unity of purpose. And defying again skeptics, you've delivered a growth rate that is equally the wonder of the world, recognizing that opening markets, deregulation, enabling businesses and individuals to pursue their own dreams, their own freedom, is the way to deliver the prosperity upon which all depends. Now, Australia has, Prime Minister, the resources and the expertise, as we've just seen, to make a very substantial contribution to India's growth and development. Spanning education, training, science and innovation, our dynamic and growing knowledge partnership can be truly transformative. We're already working together to harness the creativity and the drive of our best and brightest minds. Our flagship joint research fund, the Australia-India Strategic Research Fund, is Australia's largest with any country. And it's helped our universities, research institutions, and companies to solve the practical challenges in critical areas to both countries, including health, food security, and energy, as you've noted. The Deke and Terry uh, Nanobiotechnology Research Centre, which we just inaugurated, and I might say, Prime Minister, having been involved in the technology business in the past, I always approach any live demonstration with great anxiety. Uh, there is a, uh, there is often a, they, we, in the technology business, that they talk about the demo god, which is a malevolent deity, which generally makes sure that live online demonstrations don't quite work, but that was brilliant. And I want to say thank you to the Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor of Deakin University for uh, allaying my concerns, so well done. But this, uh, this uh, research center will bring up to 100 researchers together to solve some of the world's biggest problems from developing biofuels to early detection of crop diseases to improve productivity. And these are practical solutions with commercial prospects for both of our countries. And likewise, there's the potential to work with your government, Prime Minister, as you pursue your ambition to train 400 million Indians over the next few years. Our world-class skills training system, including train the trainer courses, which are already piloted in five Indian cities, can help India build scale quickly and open up opportunities for Australian training providers. 
As you noted, more than 60,000 Indian students studied in our institutions in 2016, and I'm committed, and we had a very fruitful discussion about this, and I, Prime Minister, you gave me a lot of great advice. You, very, you, you've, you have made education and higher education such a passion from your time in Gujarat to now as Prime Minister of India. It was very, very helpful, and uh, we, uh, we will continue to uh, ensure that we provide outstanding opportunities for Indian students and also that Australian students learn more about India by visiting and studying here, including through the scholarships and grants supported by my government's new Colombo plan. Our deepening collaboration on water management uh, is supporting your national water policy by improving river basin planning and management, hydrological modelling, and sustainable water use. And I might say uh, the management of water resources in India has been a passion of several Prime Ministers of Australia, including one of our earliest, Alfred Deakin, who made a study of the irrigation system in uh, India, a, uh, a particular focus of his as he took learnings from that and uh, set up the irrigation models uh, for Australia. Our know-how and resources are already partnering with India's 24-7 Power for All Smart Cities and Make in India programs. But there's room for further growth. We've worked closely with India to meet our respective requirements for the provision of fuel for India's civil nuclear program, and we look forward to the first export of Australian uranium to India as soon as possible. Now, Prime Minister, you recognise that all Indians need access to reliable and affordable energy. And like us, uh, you share a technology agnostic, all of the above approach. Pragmatic. That's exactly how we focus on the issue. So we're pleased to be providing increasing quantities of high quality coal for steel making and increasingly for power generation with advanced supercritical technology. Like Australia, India is planning to increase its pumped hydro storage capacity and we look forward to sharing expertise in that vitally important part of the 21st century energy system. And India, like Australia and many other countries, is also advancing solar energy. Indeed, we believe that by next year, about 60% of the world's solar cells will use technology developed by Australian researchers. Solar energy offers lower cost distributed energy, which is of particular importance in the developing world. So I want to congratulate you, Prime Minister, for your global leadership in establishing the International Solar Alliance, and I'm very happy to announce that we will join that alliance. Now, our trading relationship is delivering significant benefits to our respective nations. Last year, two-way trade in goods and services was nearly $20 billion, more than double what it was a decade ago. But given the complementarities of our two economies, this is a fraction of the level it could and should be. Now, we're working with India to secure timely conclusion of a quality regional comprehensive economic partnership, the RCEP, which would provide a significant boost to regional confidence. We had a very good discussion about the SICA, the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement between India and Australia. And I think it's fair to say that we feel that progress has not been as fast as either of us would like it to be. And so, as you said, we, have, uh, asked our, uh, we will ask our chief negotiators to schedule an early meeting uh, to get the process moving. Uh, we'll, tab ask, we'll ask them to tabulate the areas of ambition uh, where each side is seeking access so that we can see where the, where and to what extent the parties, the negotiators, are apart, and they will report back to us as soon as possible so that we can keep the focus on delivering uh, the seeker uh, and identifying uh, the areas where more work needs to be done. But in the meantime, uh, the wheels of industry go on, and we're working to identify tangible commercial opportunities to strengthen two-way trade and investment, and this will be a particular focus of my visit to Mumbai uh, later this week. Finally, as you noted, sir, our work together in the stra strategic and security spheres continues to gain momentum through regular engagement across all three armed services and high-level talks with our 
defence ministers and officials. As Indo-Pacific democracies committed to the rules-based international order, we share interests on a broad range of regional and global security issues. Building on the 2014 Framework for Security Cooperation, I hope that our new MOU on combating transnational organised crime, including international terrorism, will continue to strengthen this strategic partnership. It will facilitate closer collaboration on counter-terrorism, cyber security, people smuggling and human trafficking, money laundering and attacks on critical infrastructure. In addition, as you noted, we're working more closely together with our friends and partners in the region, including through the East Asia Summit and the Indian Ocean Rim Association. So, in conclusion, thank you, Prime Minister Modi, for your personal commitment to helping us realise the full potential of the Australia-India partnership. With our shared commitment and the passion, the ingenuity, the determination of our two nations, I have no doubt that our partnership will go from strength to strength. Thank you. Uh, thank you to both Prime Ministers. Uh, we now come to the end of the proceedings here. Thank you, everybody.